Hi, and welcome to Tiger Art. Today we're going to be learning about a very important, very famous American artist named Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol was a printmaker, and that means that he made prints. And it's not like you would think like printing something off a computer. This is back uh, a little while ago. So they were, there wouldn't be printers readily available like they are today. So we're talking about the actual art of making a print using what you would think of maybe like a stencil or a stamp. So if you place a stencil down on a page that's shaped like something and you push ink through it and then you lift the stencil and you're left with that shape. So let's go through some of Andy Warhol's famous prints and look at what his style was all about. He was called a pop artist, and he was one of the important figures in starting and really getting, uh, getting going the pop art movement. Pop art, if we look at the words pop art, pop comes from popular, so things that are part of pop culture, which is objects or people or things that everybody would recognize. So things that are part of our pop culture today could be like famous characters from cartoons or famous musicians or famous actors and actresses movies tv shows anything that is part of pop culture would be good subjects for pop art so then who's this very famous figure from andy warhol's time this is marilyn monroe we can see a bit of the pop art style here. Lots of bright colors, usually the use of black, and imagery that is of something you recognize. In Andy Warhol's time, everybody would recognize this. You may not. Campbell's soup cans. So he would often print sets of four or more of the same thing. And the repetition of those with varying colors would make a composition. So either you could sell these individually as one, or you could sell sets of them like as a group of four like this. He also made some prints with flowers that look like this. This is a pretty famous print. Uh, I've seen it in several places before. He also has variations on this where they are printed more than once. I really like Andy Warhol's Endangered Species series, and that's where he printed pictures of animals and used bright colors in them. So you'll notice in these endangered species prints, you'll notice the use of bright colors that really exaggerate some of the, uh, the movement lines around the outside and make them more interesting. I really like this one. I like the colors and I also really like the line work. It makes it more interesting and it adds movement to the piece. Meaning when you look at it, you can imagine the movement of these lines. This is a neat print of a frog using bright colors and some of those outlines. I'm sure we can appreciate this in Tiger Art class. Look at the background in this one. I like the way it looks. It looks kind of neat. It's like two different versions of the same color with uh, some texture over it. So it's like making the texture of a background there. This one is really cool. I like how the lines are offset from the zebra. So it's like if you were to print those lines directly where they belong, they would fit right on the outline between the black and white. But if you move it a little bit, so when that yellow was printed, I think the stencil was moved over a bit, causing what's called an offset. And that just kind of offsets the edge and adds an extra layer to it. It adds more depth and it adds a bit of movement to it as well. It makes it more interesting to look at. It's kind of a neat idea. I can see some of that offsetting here as well, where the outline around the elephant just missed. So it's the same shape, it just looks like it was slid over a bit. Also, it's cool to see a pink elephant. I really like this one, picture of an orangutan, and I, it just looks kind of goofy to me, but it still is cool looking. So it's still a cool work of art, but it also is kind of goofy, it makes me smile. Pop art does that for us a lot. So I said pop art's all about things that are famous or easily recognizable. Nothing's more famous than Mickey Mouse. Everybody recognizes Mickey Mouse when they see it. 
Here's a set of four Marilyn Monroes, all printed with different colors. This is something that I said was very common in Andy Warhol's work. I've seen this stuff since his time. So he was working, you know, 40 or so years ago. I've seen a lot of things like this now. So I might see posters or advertisements, things in commercials or TV shows, movies that look just like this, inspired by Andy Warhol. All right, so for today, you're going to need some pieces of paper. In your art kit, I gave you a little circle that looks like this. You're going to need that. And you're gonna need pieces of paper that are yellow, red, orange, and blue. So you should have those two. This is just regular construction paper. You may have used part of it before, but hopefully you saved what was left over because we, we will need a small part of it for today. So you don't need a full sheet of each, you just need uh, closer to about a quarter of a sheet. So here's what I would do. If you have a full sheet of yellow, just start with that. Place it down in front of you like this. Take your little yellow or your little tan circle, kind of put it about right here. So you don't wanna put it right in the center because that's just not where it needs to be. I would put it about right here. You're going to use a pencil for this and all you have to do here is hold it and then you're gonna to try to draw a flower shape. Now a good flower shape would be something that has probably four petals would be good. I wouldn't try to do too many more than that. I mean, you could, but I'm just trying to think of what makes your life easier here. So what I would do is I would hold this tight, not let it go. Make sure you have some space all the way around it, but you don't need a ton of space. So you just need about that much. So starting at the circle, you just gotta draw a flower petal like that. Holding this in place, not letting it move, we're just gonna turn and draw another one. They can be the same or they can be a little different, like it can be a different shape kind of. So then we're gonna do a different one. This one can be a little different. Curve in, curve out. And that's good enough. So when you move this away, you got something that looks pretty much like the flowers in an Andy Warhol print. Let's create our next one. Doing the same thing. Placing this yellow circle about here with about that much space. Once again, if you cut up your papers and you just got scraps left, as long as you got a piece about this big of each one or any old construction paper, or if you don't have this color, you wanna use a different color, I'm okay with that. So just make it work. So starting at the circle, we draw, I'm gonna draw four. Once again, you could do more than that if you wanted to. I don't know if less would look as good. You could try it. You're welcome to do that. So this time I used five and that's okay. That looks cool too. So I got two flowers, a yellow, an orange. All right, so when you're done with that, now you need to cut all of these out. So you'll need scissors. Okay, then you're gonna want something black, like a black marker or a black colored pencil or a black crayon would probably be best. And all you're gonna be doing with this is going to the side that you did not write on. So this, I can see that there's some pencil marks here inside of where I cut. That's fine. If that's the case, um, just flip it over if you can't see any pencil marks, then that's great news. That means that you don't have to worry about them. But if you see any, flip it over before you do this, this part. So this part is just a circle in the center and some little lines coming out from it. You could also just do it like this. This could be like an X maybe with three little parts on it. Or 
or four. So then when you're done, you're just gonna take a picture of these four flowers and submit that for today. Next lesson will be all about kind of putting it together into a picture. But for now, you're just making the flowers and getting them ready and making sure you don't lose them before next class because you will need them. After that, you can spend some time drawing or coloring, something artistic if you have a little bit of extra time. All right, I hope you have fun with this. I will see you next time.